Last year I did a video on the things I no longer buy after I found my personal style and it was really popular. So after yet another year of truly being mindful about curating my style, I have definitely come up with a lot more things to add to this list and so I thought in today's video we would go into some of them. So without further ado, the first thing on the new list that I no longer buy after I found my personal style is anything overly trendy. I mean this in general but just for right now to make an example out of it, what comes to mind right now is feather trims. This trend seems to be everywhere right now and I'm not gonna lie, I think it's kind of chic and cute but the thing is you will buy a blazer of lightly low quality because for a lot of the time it will be the fast fashion stores that make this and you will wear it this season as it's trendy and then next season that blazer is going to be trash. And personally for me, I just can't afford to with certainty throw that much money away. I'm going to have to at least try to find something more timeless than that. And feather cuffs might be cute right now, but next year or the year after that, I will be hopelessly unstylish in something that was once just a trend and I'm probably better off wearing a blazer that just isn't trendy in the same sense. Another thing I was just thinking about that I see everywhere are these like bow heels with like the crystal bow on them I don't remember what brand they're from but that's another thing where like these are so expensive and they might be cute but you will wear them these this season and then next year or the year after that they will be hopelessly not trendy anymore so personally for me I'm going to stick to the nice heels that I already own because oh my god finding heels are even comfortable enough that I want to wear them a full night has been difficult enough for me so I'm gonna stick to the ones I already own and love. I do want to say though this doesn't really count for everything of course there are trends that we are going to truly fall in love with but in that sense I really do try to ask myself why that is. The exception for me here for example is the sweetheart neckline sweater top that has been really in for about a couple of seasons and I do love that one. It's probably here to stay in my wardrobe even though it's gonna not be trendy forever. The next thing on my list that I no longer buy are anything that I am supposed to have whatever the heck that means. This craze that has been going on for such a long time about how you need this type or knit or need this type of blazer or need these types of jeans or need a pair of sneakers. Yeah, I just don't buy into that at this point. There are so many of these standard basics that you need to have that I definitely do not need to have and if you're regular to my channel you already know that for me that one is definitely it's t-shirts but I've also found that it's razor bags. T-shirts I think I look frumpy and I look heavier than I am and with razor bags I think that I'm too busty for them and they make my shoulders look way broader than they are. Instead I have found for me that the perfect compromise are fitted long sleeve tubs and then sometimes fitted tank tubs with straps that are a little bit wide and then also halter make tubs. These are similar enough that they will help give the same-ish effect, but they do suit my body type better, I think, and they also, for that reason, makes me feel more comfortable. And for that reason, at this point, I seriously do not have a single t-shirt in my wardrobe. I have bought so many of them throughout my lifetime, and I never, ever, ever felt like I looked attractive or like they were me. So whatever that is for you, if, if it's that black blazer or that slip dress that everyone seems to think that you should own, you could consider going ahead and giving up on that just like I did on t-shirt and most recently razor bags as well. The next thing on my list that I no longer buy now that I've curated a better personal style is coats cut with polyester. This is pretty fitting because we're going into the cold months right now and since I've had a couple of years now to curate better style, I have three coats that I absolutely love. They are all from the curated. They are just of such high quality. 
I have one in charcoal gray, navy, and now one in brown. So there's a little thing for every part of my color scheme. I can make some pretty good outfits from them. And now that I have something this high end, I absolutely refuse to add something to my wardrobe that won't be truly comfortable. And when it comes to outerwear, it does just have to be warm. But more than that, a coat will take up so much space of your outfit. It will be such a huge percentage of what you're wearing. And when you're wearing something cut with polyester, what I've noticed is that a lot of the time it won't really fall beautifully. It will sort of crease in these weird ways. And more than that, polyester doesn't do a very good job at keeping you neither warm or cool you down when you then are overheating under your coat. So the day I buy a coat from polyester, now that I have three great alternatives in my wardrobe already, is the day I want you to chase me with pitchforks. The next thing I no longer buy, and I'm sorry, I am building a little bit on the last point, but I really thought it deserved its own mention, and that is polyester sweaters. This is one of those instances where I haven't made a mistake or made an exception since I made this rule, except for the exception to the exception, I guess, which is I do have like a sweetheart neckline sweater from H&M, which is cut with a bit of polyester, but it does more count as a top for me that I truly bought for its design. But outside of that, just regular sweaters, you know, turtleneck sweater, a fitted sweater, a loose sweater, any type of knit that is just a standard, classic, beautiful knit. Oh my god, stay the hell away from polyester. Again, it does such a terrible job of keeping you both warm, but then again, also cooling you back down as you're sweating under it, and you will be truly uncomfortable as you are layering on top and underneath, for that matter, a polyester sweater. I really feel like a sweater made from polyester is not a sweater, it is a trash bag with arms. So for me, when I want a basic sweater, I make sure I look consistently for something that is wool and cashmere, and if I buy something, in polyester that's the top. I make sure it's because it is real, real special and I would wear it regardless. The next thing I no longer buy as I've found my personal style, and this might seem redundant, but it is duplicates slash similar items. Of course, there is exceptions to every rule, but again, as a general rule, I try to find the best version of an item I can in its category and then just wear that. And something that comes to mind, and this is absolutely not a, a jab at her, but I was watching one of my favorite UK YouTubers. She tends to buy the same thing over and over again. She also mentioned it herself. Like one of the things she buys a lot are base blazers and when you look behind her, she has like so unbelievably many of them. And at this point, I'm like, when you have slash need 10, 20 of the same item with just slight differences, maybe it's time to look for the perfect version of that item again, so that you're not tempted to buy the same thing over and over again. Just in my personal experience, whenever I buy something, I could truly go out and find the exact perfect version of something that I want and then also spend a big extra to get the perfect version of it. It truly makes me less tempted to go out and rebuy the same thing over and over again. Some things we might actually like to have a lot of similar slash duplicates of, but just overall, if you're rebuying the same style over and over again, it might be time to look into getting the best version of it. Like for example, if you really like a black sweater, it would make more sense to find a Rolls Royce of a black sweater in its category rather than going out to rebuy that same item again and again and again because what you're essentially doing is you're just feeding that feeling of adding something new but an easy new because it's something that you always like but essentially you will just be rewearing the same item again and again and again and it's a bit redundant when that money could have been spent just looking for like a really truly nice good quality black sweater whatever that means to you. The next thing I no longer buy as I've curated a better sense of personal style are accessories to feed my crow brain. This again builds a little bit on what I just said about newness, how we tend to feed that feeling of wanting something new, like we get that dopamine hit from that 
experience and I have tended to do that a lot in the past with accessories because it's cheaper it seems more reasonable oh I think I need a pair of gloves oh I think I need a new beanie oh this scarf is cute I don't do that anymore honestly I've bought a couple of really nice high-end scarves in different colors i have one set of gloves now and i also have just one beanie it's baby blue so i might get a neutral at some point but just overall that frivolous spending on small trinkets in terms of accessories that can also be jewelry that you will never wear or custom jewelry that will tarnish super quickly i try to recognize that i'm essentially just feeding this like addiction and i'm not necessarily getting anything out of my money however every rule does have an exception as I always like to say and for me that one is scrunchies and also sometimes hair clips because I do truly wear them all the time so again every rule you might make has an exception but that is also something that comes with truly getting to know your personal style and for me for example that is knowing that I can do this with hair accessories but I cannot do this with other accessories the next thing on my list I no longer buy after I found my personal style is warm white now it truly wouldn't be a YouTube video of mine without mentioning color in some form or another and as you may or may not know when it comes to color tones there are two color families in terms of the warm family and the cold family and as someone with cool toned skin and now a cool toned wardrobe I do not buy any warm whites for it when you are wearing a color in an undertone that does not suit you it will throw your entire beauty out of a balance and furthermore it's also going to throw that entire outfit out of balance if you mix it up with colors in the tone from the opposite family. And since I am truly as cool toned as I am, a warm white truly just does not suit me. It does have to be a clear white. And if you are a warm toned person, the opposite will be true for you. The next thing I am no longer buying after I've curated a better sense of personal style is a light gray. I thought of this and I thought it was a fun thing to mention because a light gray is something that I see a lot, especially on Pinterest, on Instagram. It seems to be a popular color for many, but a light gray just makes me so sad. I definitely recall having had a few light gray sweaters and stuff like that throughout my time and I also don't remember looking awful in them or like hating them at the time, but now that I have this range of colors in the color scheme that I've made for my wardrobe, I just cannot see a light gray fitting in there because it just makes me so sad. It is a little bit depressing for me, that color. I do like gray. I do have a charcoal gray in my wardrobe, but for me, that more looks like a soft black than an actual gray. So yeah, light gray is something that I've also had to give up on, even though they do make a lot of good pieces in this color. And the next thing on this list that I no longer buy after having found my personal style are prints. I can only think of unbelievably few exceptions to this and it's been like that all my life. I don't like polka dots, I don't like stripes, I don't like almost every print you can imagine and I get sick of it so quickly but nonetheless I have tried to make so many prints work throughout my lifetime and just most recently I tried on a top in another stories because I thought it looked so cute on the hanger and I also actually thought it looked really cute on me but I just know that there's no point in buying it because I will be so sick of it come next month. There are a few exceptions to this like there is for everything else. I do have a slip dress and one more dress with smaller prints. In this sense it's like one big block color and then just a few pieces scattered around is the type of print that I can tolerate, if ever any. But even then, the blue dress, I never even wear that. And I know a lot of people love prints, and I think that's also one of the reasons I've tried to make it work. Like, you see stuff working for other people, and then you want it to work for yourself. You're like, why can't I get this right? But you're not getting anything wrong, you just have different tastes. And for me, that is definitely the case with prints. And all the times I've owned something, even like a simple print, like 
a small polka dot or a stripe, I have always ended up decluttering it because I just I don't feel good in it. For me, it's so important to keep track of what does not work and why, because when I lose track of this, I tend to waste money, time, effort and resources of the planet by taking something out of rotation that need not be because I forgot why something did not work. And it does happen sometimes, sometimes we have to relearn our lessons or like make a mistake that we already know is a mistake. Unfortunately, it just tends to happen that way. But if you don't sit down and like really make a conscious effort of trying to remember at least what those things are, we are bound to stay in this like turmoil or hurricane of having too many options to pick from when we go out and shop. And so I definitely highly recommend that sitting down and, and thinking of why something doesn't work. This is the second one of this video that I'm making and you guys had so many good comments on the last one. And I remember someone mentioning that they had been buying jeans for decades all their life only to just recently realize that it jeans just aren't for them but it's for everyone else so because of that they have thought there was probably some like weird reason that it wasn't working out working out for them and then they kept trying and then at the end realized like why the heck am i trying to make jeans work i would much rather wear pants or skirts and that's essentially what it is. There are so many options of what to wear. You do not need to stick with the thing that most other people wear. You can go ahead and give up on a few things. At least that has helped out my own personal style immensely. If you're interested in it, here is the older video I did on this topic. And down here is another video from me that YouTube thinks you might want to watch. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.